here welcome to a pre-draw top 10 uh derby prep review type show i just wanted to get one more in just with some final thoughts on my i spent all last week profiling all 20 horses and i've watched videos on them and and looked at past performances and seen how they looked and everything and i just thought i'd maybe put together like a little top 10 list everybody loves lists so uh, that's what we're going to do today. Um, you know, Derby comes around once a year, and we always get really excited for it here in Louisville, Kentucky. That's where I've been born and raised. And it just it makes me think back to, you know, I, I've mentioned before in videos, my great aunt and uncle owned a farm, horse farm in Simpsonville. And I did a lot of growing up out there. They had fishing ponds, and we could learn to shoot guns and ride four-wheelers. And it was just a really for a place to kid – for a 25, 30 minute drive to the country, it was like my vacation every year. I went out there, my parents would dump me off on my grandma who lived out there with them. And uh, I'd spend a week, me and my cousin or, or just me or spend a weekend. Uh, it was, it was really so much fun and you get to pet the horses and, and you could help feed them and, and, you know, just see them, uh, see them in their natural habitat. Uh, like that is, it's kind of cool. So anyway, uh, so we're going to today we're going to look at the best five prep races uh, that I that I saw myself. And we're going to dig out uh, most of our top 10 from those and then maybe just a couple more in there. So uh, you and me both, uh, you know, we're both happy that I that I got my screen recorder working properly. So uh, these will not be the choppy uh, the ones you saw last week. It's going to be nice and fluid. So I appreciate everyone joining me today. Just remember, uh, hit that subscribe button for me and uh, the like as well. You can smash it or just press it. I, I'm not uh, picky. So appreciate you. Tell a friend and, uh, you know, let's go. Let's get started. All right, and uh, we are getting ready to get into some prep races here. So uh, I, I just kind of ranked them in order as I saw them. Uh, you know, I've watched them all, and I guess probably the, the stretch runs in, in most of them were the ones that, that pushed me overboard. So the first up, my favorite prep, was actually the Florida Derby. Uh, you just can't beat this kind of a stretch run, both by Mage, or, yeah, Mage and Forte. Uh, like I said before, I, I see something I missed every time I watch these videos. So just prior to hitting the stretch run, uh, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it on this video, but when Mage makes that move to jump out in front and try to get beat Forte to the punch, uh, Luis Saez riding uh, Forte sees, or I mean, I read Ortiz, I read Ortiz, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, riding Forte sees Luis Saez on Mage, uh, and so he jumps in behind, right behind him, and, and so he doesn't get loose on him, and and so he nearly didn't get there. But it just always seems like jockeys know exactly how much uh, distance they need to cover in in the amount of time to get there, because you always see horses come along in the end and poking their head up, up front right at the tail end. So. Uh, Anyway, obviously Forte's going to make this list. He's the number one, but where is he going to make the list? You got to stick around to find out. And also stick around to see if I have Mage in there as well, because I may, may or may not. I haven't decided yet. Uh, hint, hint. Uh, so on a side note, actually, uh, in this race, like something I noticed, Cyclone Mischief ran a pretty solid race his, uh, himself, uh, and he may get a chance if we have one uh, another dropout. But uh, next up, uh, is the Bluegrass Stakes, and it was another head-to-head -head battle down the stretch. Verifying and Tap It both deserve a lot of credit for some grit here. Uh, I like the way both these horses uh, ran in this race, so we'll see where they land on the list. Uh, Tap It Trice uh, got the uh, leg up in the end, 
but they both ran good enough to to win, in my opinion. So uh, now the other ones in, that are in the Derby, Sun Thunder and Ray's Kane, they were both moved forward down the stretch uh, after they both had trip trouble, but it's not likely they're going to make my top 10. Uh, uh, but you never know after the post draw, uh, things can change. Now, next up, Santa Anita Derby. This was kind of a three-way battle down the stretch and uh, might just have a few uh, horses to make the list here. Uh, practical move ran another great race, staying out of trouble and getting inside to save ground. And that, but the question is, and that's what other other people are asking: Ramon Vasquez, will he be able to place him inside and save ground without getting banged around too much? Uh, so his draw will definitely matter. But as of now, um, he's not in the top flight, but he he it's possible he makes this list. Uh, and now there's a couple other horses. Mandarin Hero is still on the outside looking in, but Skinner, who made a nice looking stretch run, uh, he might have been a little closer if Mandarin Hero hadn't come in and kind of bullied him a little bit there and, and kind of interrupted his stride. But uh, we'll we'll see where, where we're at at the end. Uh, another that was a another great uh, prep race, by the way. Now the next up uh, was Arkansas Derby, which was another great performance by Angel of Empire who was much the best making this uh, big, strong sweeping move around the, the turn to take command of the race. And it was no question he won driving out. And so basically I wasn't convinced uh, on reincarnate or rocket can that have the juice uh, to make a top 10 list here. They're, they're, they're still also rands to me. Uh, maybe rocket can uh, might, uh, you know, change my mind if I start to get into some past performances. But as of now, uh, we're going to go to the last uh, prep race on my list, and uh, it's going to be the Louisiana Derby. And, yes, uh, commenters uh, can make me change my perspective. And and one comment, and I apologize, I don't remember uh, your screen name, but you did mention people would be sleeping on King's Barns because of that super slow pace in the louisiana derby uh and and uh you swayed me a little bit uh i think he, he did he took full advantage of the slow pace to sit on the lead and uh, and for him to have a full tank of gas like that and speed away at the end was impressive and once he kicked it in nobody could catch him uh the it was a little bit bothersome that flavian pratt chose to ride angel of empire over King's Barnes, because sometimes when jockeys have a choice, they, they want to choose the horse they think that's going to give them the best chance to ride a derby winner. So that that kind of t- t- uh, keys me up there a little bit. But they uh, pick up uh, little brother Jose, uh, younger brother of Irad Ortiz, and he's going to get the mount on King's Barn, which I think is a great choice because he's got six times derby uh, mounts, and he's got four times finishing in the top six. And he, he rode Good Magic, who was second in 2018, and Tacitus third in 2019. So, uh, like I said, I was down on King's Barn for the, for the slow pace, uh, thinking he couldn't get that lucky in the Derby. But he's maybe he's a horse that needs to be looked at. Unraced as a two-year-old, that's another knock. Is he Justify? Because Justify is the only horse in the last – hundred so years of what was it Apollo we don't even talk about Apollo anymore uh unraced as a two-year-old to win a derby so I think he's a top 10 horse I do think that he's three for three this year in races so he doesn't know what running other anything other than winning looks like so uh basically we're getting toward the end here and uh, I wanted to mention one more race but I'm not going to show it to you the UAE Derby was the one uh, everybody was buzzing about Derma Sotogaki. And uh, so basically, I'm going to go down here to the big reveal in just a second. But Derma Sotogaki won that race wire to wire. Uh, and the strides that Japan racing has made over the last several years tells me they're getting really close to getting a winner. And uh, so because they got der- they got. Uh, Derma Sotogake shipped over, quarantined, and at the track in plenty of time to get him acclimated. Uh, he he got a, a stable mate in Continuar to travel with him. I mentioned that in a previous video. 
but he blew by uh, continue R easily in a short work at the track earlier uh, this week or last week, I guess you could say. Uh, but uh, he is one to be looked at. So after further review, I uh, will scroll down here and the pre-race top 10 is boom. So I got number one, Tap It Trice. Number two, Forte. Number three, Angel of Empire. Number four, Kings Barnes. Uh, number five will be Derma Sotogake. And number six is Mage. Number seven, Verifying. Number eight, Practical Move. Number nine, Skinner. And number 10 was Disarm. I think that race, actually watching the Lexington Stakes again, that race, I you know, if you if you just watched it and went, well, he did he wasn't even close to winning, but he wasn't really needing once once the win was out of the picture, he did the smart thing and did what he needed to do to get that third place finish. I think the horse might be a little bit better than than we think. So that's kind of why I went disarm number 10. And there, there's a few, you know, I, I reserve the right to completely change everything once the derby draw comes out, which will be tomorrow. Uh, I think some in the noonish uh, Eastern time, 11 noon, somewhere I can't recall exact time, but I will be uh, out there uh, waiting for it. And then as soon as the draw comes out, I will begin to put together uh, post draw analysis and we'll see what we got. So appreciate you watching smash sub like all that good stuff. And we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.